Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about the last cars you can buy with manual transmissions. Now we used to call them standard transmissions because that was the standard in cars, but today the real standard is automatic transmissions and almost all of them come with them. Now in the beginning you can only get standard transmission vehicles. They're relatively simple. You have the engine and then there is a clutch assembly that bolts to the engine. Then the tongue of the transmission fits inside the clutch. So when you step on the clutch, that releases the plate so that the transmission is no longer getting power so you can shift gears and then pick up the clutch and it's connected again. A very simple system that works quite well. But of course people being what they are, mainly lazy, in 1921 the Canadian invented the first real automatic transmission. Proving yet again that yes, the Canadians are just as lazy as the Americans. <laughs> I lived up there. Nice people. Hey, they're just like us. There's not really no difference other than they live in a colder climate. Now, Mr. Monroe, his automatic transmission used compressed air rather than hydraulic fluid, and it was never sold commercially. The first real commercial one was General Motors. In the 1930s, General Motors started using hydraulic fluid in more or less experimental automatic transmissions. They were selling them commercially. And in 1940, they came out with a hydromatic automatic transmission, which was a big beginning of automatic transmissions in cars. Now these hydromatic automatic transmissions were used in different forms from 1940 to 1958. They had a long run. Then they came up with this jet system and it was a piece of crap. It didn't last very long. In 1968 they came up with their turbo hydromatic, which was really the best one that they ever really made in terms of historical changes and smoothness and a true automatic transmission that shifted quite well. The turbo hydromatic was really the first commercially viable automatic transmission that actually shifted quite well and lasted a long time. It was really a radical change. They weren't just some clunky thing that yeah it would shift but it would jerk and they not last that long and slip like mad when they're going up hills. And since then all kinds of manufacturers have worked at perfecting the automatic transmission. Now they're all headed towards electronic computer controlled transmissions that of course are more efficient. They get better power and even better gas mileage. And they've radically added more gears for efficiency and power. You can get a 10 speed automatic transmission that is actually quite well built. I've driven them, I got customers with them and they really are kind of amazing. It's an automatic transmission that really has the power of a standard, gets better gas mileage and you don't have to shift the stupid thing. We're dealing with a level of complexity that's insane. If you would have ever taken one of these apart and seen what's inside and then understand that all these electronic controls are run by computers with software that as the transmission wears inside, everything wears, the computer software has to take that wear into consideration so that they still shift smoothly. You want to have 150,000 miles on them. Well, at least the good ones do. I mean, if you take a Fiat Chrysler, odds are you'll never get 150,000 miles out of one of their transmissions before it just falls apart in front of your very eyes. There are downsides of automatic transmissions when they're not made correctly. And if we look at the figures, automatic versus manuals in the United States, Take the Toyota Corolla, big seller. Out of 280,000 of them sold last year, less than 1% had standard transmissions. The rest all had automatic transmissions. Now even the Toyota Tacoma, the venerable pickup, that thing only sells 5% manual transmissions in the United States. 95% of the people buying the Tacomas are getting automatic transmissions. I take the 2020 Toyota Yaris, even though it's really a Mazda. Toyota's not even offering their hatchback with the standard transmission. They're only going to be automatics. And take the Toyota 86. Really, that's a Subaru. <laughs> but Toyota's decided to sell the rebadged Subarus as Toyota 86s. Even that, it's a little sporty car. More than two-thirds of the buyers in the United States are buying them with automatic transmissions. And yes, they are quite a bit slower. I've driven the standards and the automatics and I take the standards every time. The automatics are pretty doggy if you ask me for a little sports car. Now overall in the United States, 96% of the people drive automatic transmission vehicles. Now in some states it's a little bit higher, like Maine, New Hampshire, 
New Mexico, El Paso, Texas for some reason has a very high rate of manual transmissions. Let's face it, we're becoming a more urban society. You're in more traffic jams. Nothing is more annoying than being in a stick shift when you got an hour commute going stop and go, stop and go on the highway. So which vehicles can you still get in the United States with the standard transmission? Well, you can get a Toyota Tacoma. There's a little bit of an asterisk there. They only offer it on special vehicles. You can only get it in the TRD sports versions where you get a six speed standard transmission and you have to get a V6 engine and it has to be four wheel drive. So you're gonna pay a lot of money for it. Like it used to be that, well, people bought a standard transmission cause it was cheaper. It was a standard one. You paid extra for an automatic. Well, in this case, you're gonna pay a lot more for the standard cause you gotta get the V6. You gotta get the all wheel drive. So. Even there, they're kind of limiting what you can get. The Subaru WRX. A lot of guys like to use them for drifter cars and stuff, and there's always a certain amount of people that don't want a sporty car that's got a standard transmission that they can zip around it. And in the case of Subaru, it's kind of a rarity these days, the manual transmission actually gets three miles a gallon better than the CVT transmission. That was the main reason that people in the past would buy standards, because they got a lot better gas mods. The older automated transmissions would slip some, they were heavy. Original ones were two or three speeds, so they didn't have that many speeds, so they're going to get worse gas mods, and it's going to affect their acceleration. But in this case, the Subaru still gets better gas mods than the CVT transmission that are known for high gas mileage. Now, the Volkswagen Jetta still offers a standard transmission. Yeah, I'm not a Volkswagen fan, but Volkswagen always made very good standard transmissions, and people buy those Jettas because they want to drive around zippy and with the standard transmission they are very zippy cars the rest of the car may not last but with the standard transmission you got a much better chance of making it over a hundred thousand miles with the standard than you do with the horrible automatic transmissions that volkswagens make these days and the mazda miata is still available in a standard transmission and here it's cool because it actually costs less than the automatic transmission like it used to be they're a little sports car and people want to have fun with a little sports car. Hey, these aren't luxury riding machines as smooth as could be. And really, the Miata with the standard transmission is so much better than one with an automatic. Customers I have that have automatics in them, I don't even like driving around. They're boring. They don't have that much pickup. But the standards, they really are fun. And the Mini Cooper is still available in the United States with the standard transmission. They're seen as cute little sporty cars. They're not really all that fast. They have the brains to realize that a lot of people are going to be buying these. They still want a standard transmission. And truth be told, customers of mine with automatic minis, I drive around the block, that's it. They're not all that much fun. They're a lot more fun with a standard transmission. Now the Nissan Frontier, a little pickup truck, that's available in the standard too. You'd be surprised at some of the pickups that aren't even available with automatic transmissions. You can still get a standard transmission with the Kia Soul, but it's only available on the bottom line. If you want all the extras and stuff, you're going to have to go with an automatic. But the bottom line one, you can still get a standard transmission if you want to zip around in that crazy looking box. And the Jeep Wrangler still comes with a six speed standard transmission. It's actually standard equipment. They come standard with a V6 engine and a six speed manual. It's $2,000 cheaper than the automatic. So that's kind of a classic thing. Not that I'd say go out and buy a modern Jeep since Fiat took over, but they still do have the manual transmission available. And everybody knows that Chrysler's had nothing but problems with their automatic transmissions for the ages. So if you are gonna buy a Chrysler product, my advice, get a standard transmission one, please. Now BMW, the ultimate driving machine, still offers a standard in the United States, the very expensive ones, the M4s, but they they no longer offer it in their 3 Series. They realize they still got to have some standards because the whole thing is the ultimate driving machine, right? But they're really pretty much phasing out a lot of their bigger sellers. And they got those paddle shifters on the automatics that, ah, they work decent enough now. Realizing a BMW, if that transmission ever does go out, it's a king's ransom to fix the stupid thing. Screwed with BMW either way. You either guy buy a super expensive M4 with a standard, or buy one that has a super expensive automatic transmission. So my advice is don't buy either of them. <laughs> Now, strangely enough, Cadillac still offers one standard transmission, the ATS-V. It's got to be the dash V. 
All the other ones have automatic transmissions. And a few years back, they started pushing their standards a little, and they're still making it an ATS-V coupe. Now you're gonna pay way too much money for one, there's no arguing that, but at least you can still get it in a standard transmission. And you can still get a stick shift on a Chevy Camaro. I mean, that's their base, so they're still making stick shifts, but I thought it was rather hilarious that the new mid-engine Corvette is only coming with an automatic transmission. They're not even offering a standard transmission with that thing. And you can still get a Chevy Spark with the standard transmission. I guess we're going to, you can get the cheapest cars out there with a standard, or the expensive fast ones with a standard, but not all that much in between. Not that I'd buy a Chevy Spark, but if you want an Econobox car, it's got a standard transmission, so you don't have to worry about all the problems GM has with their automatic transmissions, and go to a standard with a little little bitty cheap runabout car. You can still get a standard transmission, a Dodge Challenger. You get one of those Hellcat specials with 700 something horsepower and a standard transmission. Those are tire burning monsters. And of course, Ford's version of their muscle car, the Ford Mustang, is still available in the standard transmission and the fancy ones like the Bullet and the GT350, they're only available in standard transmission. People like Mustangs having a shifter on the floor, that's just a classic thing, they'll probably always make them that way. They'll probably be the last one on the planet still with a standard shifter and some insane engine for the people that have enough money to buy gasoline when it's $30 a gallon or something. <laughs> and the Honda Civic still comes with a standard transmission. If you take their screaming Civic Hype R, the racing one, that only comes in a standard transmission. So now you know a little bit more about the death of standard transmissions, mainly in the United States, and the history of automatic transmissions, how and why they are taking over. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, Remember to ring that bell.